Good morning. So today we're talking about universal access to information, and that's critical. But I would submit to you that when we talk about goal four, universal access to education, it's not enough just to have access to information. We have to be literate. We have to be able to understand the information. We have to have the critical thinking skills to use that information and that data effectively. Every country in the world has a public education system for a very good reason, because we want the citizens in our countries, in our world, to have an education. We know that today in the globalized world that we live in, it's never been more important to have an education and more and more a higher education if you want to be competitive in the global economy. We know that people that have educations can get better jobs. Their lifetime incomes are significantly higher. They have a better life for them and their families. We also know that to the extent that uh, in, uh, in our work, we work on pluralistic democracies. We want, uh, we want governments that work for people that are transparent. And if you want that kind of a relationship between the citizens and the government, you need an educated population. This is what we talk about when we're looking at goal four. I'm pleased to say that we live in a very interesting time. And this is only happening in approximately the past 10 to 15 years uh, where this has existed. We have educational resources, the textbooks, the courses, the degree programs, the videos, uh, all of the documents, all of the tools that we use to teach people how to read and write, to think critically, to learn uh, physics and chemistry. All of those resources uh, today, for the most part, are what we call born digital. Now I'll talk about the digital divide in just a moment, so bear with me. But even though we have printed copies, even though we have non-internet delivery of educational resources, there's usually a digital file on the back end. That's interesting because today we can store, distribute, and make copies of digital works for near zero cost. That's because of the internet, it's because of falling computer prices and disk space, it's because of cloud computing. The second thing that we have are open licenses. So this is where I work at Creative Commons. We're a global nonprofit. We make the standard open copyright license that the, that the world uses to share copyrighted works. These are legal in every country in the world. They're free. They've been dedicated to the public domain, so they will always exist. And it's a way for an author of an educational resource to keep their copyright and share their work with the world for free. When we mix these two things together, educational resources and an open license, what you get are open educational resources. This is a term that UNESCO itself coined in 2002. The year before that, MIT opened all of its curriculum and it continues to be freely downloadable and hundreds of other universities around the world have followed suit. When we're talking about open educational resources, we're not talking about free MOOCs. Many of you have heard about MOOCs online and MOOCs are a wonderful thing, but most of them are free but not open. When we're talking about things that are open, we mean that you may have free unfettered access to them and you've got the legal permissions to download them, modify them, translate them into a different language, uh, change them for a local context to meet the needs of your learners, of your students. So open means something very different than free. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and it's not enough just to talk about sustainable development goal number four. If we truly want to leverage the power of open educational resources, of course, we need SDG 9. We need the infrastructure, the ICT infrastructure, the internet, the, the 4 and 5G cell networks, or even 3G in some places. We need computers. We need internet connectivity in all spaces for all people. Now, the good news is even when we don't have that, we can still have open educational resources because we print them, we put them on DVDs, we have memory sticks and very inexpensive Wi-Fi devices to take them all over the world. This is the world of education opportunity that we live in today. The good news is when we shift to open educational resources in our country, all of these good things happen. The first thing that happens is obvious. Access and equity to educational resources goes up. 
Everybody on day one, 100% of your students, have access to all of the educational resources that have been designed for that class. Now this may sound obvious, but even in my country, I live in the United States, two-thirds of the students don't buy the textbooks for their college or university classes because they cannot afford them. And this is in the US, a very wealthy country. The next thing that happens is that everyone gets access to relevant, effective content that makes sense for them in their context. So it might be that something is shared from the University of Barcelona and somebody in Mumbai picks it up and wants to use different examples in the chemistry class, or they want to translate it uh, into Hindi. They may have different needs uh, for the course. The next thing that happens is learning outcomes go up. No big shocker here, when 100% of the students in the class or the degree program have all of the resources on day one, guess what? They do better. And we see this in research over and over. Other interesting things happen like course dropout rates go down. Why? Because people think they can succeed in a class where they have access to all the educational resources they need to succeed. And because there are fewer dropout rates, time to degree also drops. So we're moving students through their educational opportunities much faster. It's a more effective public investment. Now that's all what I would call infrastructure that OER provides. What's even more interesting is once we have open educational resources in our learning environments, we can do things like students can become co-producers of knowledge. So we're talking about access to information. Students actually become generators, creators of information. They become citizen scientists. They become uh, motivated learners where they're solving the SDGs as part of their classroom activities. And then this knowledge, of course, because it has an open Creative Commons license on it, can be shared freely and globally anywhere, anytime. And the good news is that the world is sharing. There are approximately 1.3 billion Creative Commons licensed works on the web now. Everything from images to movies to government data sets to educational resources, to uh, museums, archives, et cetera. People are sharing. Now let me shift for a minute. One of the things that's happening to support uh, openness and open data, open educational resources, open access to scientific literature is governments are saying this very simple thing, that publicly funded education resources should be openly licensed by default. The public should have access to what the public pays for. It sounds obvious, yes? It's not the default. The default tends to be closed. Usually what happens is a government gives a grant or a contract to a grantor or to a contractor. They keep all rights reserved copyright and the rest of us get access to nothing. And so a very simple, very effective return on investment for all of the, the work that we're talking about here is simply for governments to say, if you take this money to build X, if you take this money to build that new sanitation system, if you take this money to build that new physics textbook, if you take this money to build whatever it might be for the benefit of society, you will share what you build under an open license. UNESCO called for this in the 2012 Paris OER Declaration. This is not a new idea and it continues to take hold. I'm pleased to say that many governments are doing this around the world. Last idea here. What can your government do to support open education and therefore support the goals in SDG number four? The first thing is we need ICT built out so that students have access to the internet, so they have access to computing devices. Again, not a necessity, but it sure makes all of this, it makes sharing a lot easier. The second thing is to support educators and students who want to share. It, when an institution in your country like the Noun Project in Nigeria said that it wanted to move to open educational resources, provide support there. Third, require that publicly funded education and research resources be openly licensed by default. Fourth, ensure accessibility of open educational resources to everyone. We've heard other speakers today talk about accessibility. There's no reason why all OER can't be accessible and we work very hard to make it so. And then last, to use open educational resources to support all of the SDGs. There is an education component to all of these SDGs on the wall here. Imagine uh, us working collectively through the United Nations and UNESCO and other organizations to create degree programs, courses, videos, 
put a Creative Commons license on it, share it freely with everyone around the world. We raise the level of information. We raise opportunities for education about these SDGs. If you're interested in working with this, this is my information. Thank you very much.